Chapter 3 Apotheosis. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path. Oh, let me guess. At the end of that path is a cabin. All right, here we are back in Slay the Princess, chapter three. This is the first time we've actually gone to a chapter three. Excuse me? This is the third time we've been here and this is hardly a path in the woods. It's all big and weird. Voice Another of the paranoid. witness to her radiance. Her hour is soon upon us. We've got the voice of the broken back again. I'm here to keep him in check. I'm sick of prying fingers digging around in our head, and he's making it all too easy for them to get in. This is bad. Oh, is it now? I hadn't noticed. Do you need a primer, Mr. Amnesiac? No, I'm quite all right, but if all of you would take a moment to settle down, there's something important I'd like to get across to you before it's too late. Is it about the princess? We already know all about the princess. Not to be trusted, that one. No, I, I mean, yes, it's about the princess, but whatever you think I'm going to say, it's probably not that. So does the narrator remember this time? You're not to be trusted either. Look, fine, just out with her already, yeah? But if I hear the words, you're here to slay her, or if you don't, it will be the end of the world, you'll have lost speaking privileges. I agree with this. You two are just wasting your time. It's all going to end when we open that cabin door, which means it's already all over. What's the point of dawdling when the end is already written? Okay, that nonsense he's going on about, that's what we need to talk about. You've been here before, obviously. So you have met us. Because boy, were you in denial about that last time. No, yeah. I haven't met you, but reality is clearly falling apart at the moment, and the only reason that would happen is if you knew things you weren't supposed to know. What? What? What the hell are you talking about? He's talking about those weird marble trees and how wrong everything looks. Yes, exactly. Whatever you did before gave her far too much power. So you've got to cut it out, get to that cabin and slay her before things get any more out of hand. We've built a new god and she is limitless. Oh, our thoughts do Make her small, make her small, make her small, make her small. Shit, shit, what if I'm doing it wrong? What if I'm making her even stronger? Do you hear those two, with their runaway thoughts? I'm only giving you the sliver of information I'm giving you now because things are already deep in the shitter. This was my last card to play and it looks like it's already made things worse. So hurry, cabin, now. All right, let's go. But a great and horrible change is already underway. The ground quakes beneath your feet, and you feel an unyielding force pulling at you and your surroundings. The trees start to sway, then crumble, breaking apart as everything is drawn towards the cabin. Even the earth beneath you seems to shift, your feet unable to grip solid ground as you're dragged forward along with everything else. The end of everything. The beginning of something new. The moment we open that door, she will be free. So should we just not open the door? You hear? We just have to get our thoughts in order. We just have to think straight. Any, uh, words of warning? You already know everything you need to know. All right, let's go. As you step forward, the cabin explodes. What? You're flung backwards, violently slamming into a tree as debris rains down around you. Watch in paralyzed awe and terror as the princess emerges, her body unfurling from some vast space as she stands upright to face you. The world bows to her. The ruined landscape shifts, trees and stone and the ground itself are coming to her gravity, orbiting her like a great black hole. Finally, the little bird has set me free. This is always how it was going to end. And this is always how it was going to begin. There's a loud thunk from the tree behind you as something embeds in its shattered bark. Your pristine blade. It's now or never. Take the blade. Screw all of this, I'm with you. 
A real god wouldn't need us as part of her plan. Exactly. You'll never make it to her. And even if you do what we were always supposed to, we'll take this blade and we'll sink it into her heart. Yes. Wait, everything's being flung around her. If we just throw ourselves in her no. direction with a forceful tug, you yank the blade out from the tree. You close your eyes and take a deep breath, and for a moment you can feel everything around you, like you're a part of everything, and everything is a part of you. And then your eyes open, settling on your target. It's time. Slay the princess. You launch yourself towards the princess. You can feel her gravity envelop you, carrying you from the ground into the violent swirl of her orbit. Even now you defy me. Do it then. Show me what you think it takes to end what's destined to end everything. Yeah. Do it. Show her. End this. Why do I feel so cold? You do not get the chance to slay her, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. Oh, where did she go? She's gone. Is this the end of the world? Did she end herself? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Approach the mirror. I'm not, gonna, I'm not talking to these guys. You approach the mirror. This, this doesn't feel right. It feels different. It's It'll be OK. This. I don't want yeah. to look at us. Gaze into your reflection. You've withered. What? You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. You are at the cabin. Approach her. I am a growing chorus of contradiction, a mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new, and to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. How can you stand to be a contradiction? As easily as you can stand to be you. You are like me. Even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. I like this choice. It doesn't matter how many times I go back, at least one of us always hurts the other. Don't, doesn't that change you? Doesn't that make you worse? It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse. Nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? No, not really. It seem, it all seems so distant as I'm not... Or, sorry, let me start that over. No, not really. It all seems so distant as soon as I'm near you. It does seem small from here. And the more we journey, the smaller each of those steps will be. But that doesn't make any of them less special. Maybe this is a love story. What do you think of this vessel? This one is dominance. A figure capable of bending everything to her will. She will make for a terrifying and divine heart. So it really doesn't matter if I slay the princess or not. Like, the god that we just dealt with still ended up here anyway. Do not mourn her, for she would not be able to mourn you. Um, I'm ready to go back. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again.
you're on a path in the woods. And at the end I feel like this was a pretty, pretty big moment. Um, you're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. That was a pretty big moment. That was a significant thing that just happened. Um, I don't know how many more times we have to go through this cycle or how many times it's going to change. But we're going to keep pressing forward. Thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed these. And uh, we're going to keep going and slay the princess. We'll see you next time.